So, uh, so the question is, how does starvation change brain energy metabolism? So this was an interesting question that was addressed in studies done at Harvard Medical School uh, by Dr. George Cahill, who passed away in 2010. Uh, I had the opportunity to, to talk with uh, George Cahill uh, when I got into this area of research, and he told me about this study. So they, they fasted uh, four medical students uh, for 40 days. And they looked at the blood going to the brain and the blood coming out of the brain, the carotid and the jugular uh, vein that they're looking at. And they, they looked at, uh, in a fed state, the brain's primary energy source is glucose. And after 40 days of fasting, there's an elevation of ketone bodies in the blood. So what's important that uh, after, uh, in a fed state, 100% of the energy is essentially coming from glucose. But in a starvation state, approximately two-thirds of the brain energy metabolism is from uh, beta-hydroxybutyrate and acetoacetate, which are byproducts of fatty acid oxidation or beta-oxidation in the liver. So obviously, this kind of experiment could never be reproduced today. Fasting for medical students for 40 days would never be approved by an IRB. So uh, in 1967, this was done, and prior to 1967, it was thought that the brain needed glucose exclusively as an energy source. So this was really a landmark study to show that the brain has metabolic flexibility. And uh, we're interested in exploiting that metabolic flexibility of the body and of the brain, and also uh, exploiting the lack of metabolic flexibility that cancer cells have. So we know that uh, enhancing fat oxidation with the ketogenic diet can mimic fasting. So with the ketogenic diet, you have a diet that has a macronutrient ratio that favors uh, the presence of fat. So you have about 70 Five to 80% of your diet is fats, specific kinds of fats, uh, preferably. And you have moderate protein and very low carbohydrate stores. And this enhances beta oxidation in the liver and also mobilizes fat uh, from your body. And it does this because you're, you're decreasing glucose availability and suppressing the hormone insulin. When you suppress the hormone insulin, that enhances fatty acid oxidation in the body, particularly the liver. So the liver generates a lot of acetyl-CoA that condenses to acetoacetate and then uh, forms beta-hydroxybutyrate, which is the ketone body that primarily floats around in your blood and, and energizes your cells. So you have uh, beta-hydroxybutyrate, acetoacetate, and acetone, which is spontaneously decarboxylated from uh, the acetoacetate. It's important to know that these are powerful energy molecules that serve as an alternative energy source for the brain and for the heart. And I mentioned the, uh, the cardiac efficiency of the heart is enhanced with uh, ketone metabolism. And ketones also provide an efficient form of energy for uh, the skin and for the muscles. So in our wound healing, we show that there's an enhancement of blood flow to uh, the skin with diabetic wounds. This is very difficult to sustain. So it's, you're enhancing metabolic water production and enhancing the deuterium depletion process within the cell, but very few people can sustain, can withstand a low carbohydrate diet for a long time uh, to the extreme that's needed to produce nutritional ketosis. So what we've done in, uh, through our funding with the Department of Defense and the Office of Navy Research is to develop specific ketone or ketogenic supplements. These supplements are fatty acids and, and various esters and salts of ketone bodies that can be given orally to circumvent the need for the dietary restriction that's needed to uh, rapidly and sustain nutritional ketosis. So fatty acids that are ketogenic include uh, the C8 and the C10. This is also known as octanoic acid or caprylic acid. C10 is capric acid uh, or decanoic acid. So medium, these are medium chain fatty acids that are found in palm kernel oil, but most importantly, coconut oil is the major source. And you can buy them, uh, they're known as medium chain triglyceride oils. And when you consume these, they go rapidly to the liver and they're quickly oxidized through beta oxidation 
Uh, and the rapid beta oxidation of these fatty acids produces ketones in, in the liver. And then the ketones can enter the bloodstream and provide the brain a source of, uh, of metabolic fuel in the absence of glucose or the deficiency of glucose. So here's an example of a study that we published in the American Journal of Physiology where we administered a synthetic ketone ester at time zero. And this is the blood levels of ketones, beta-hydroxybutyrate, and acetoacetate over four hours. So it's important to know that starvation and the ketogenic diet, which is a carbohydrate-restricted uh, high-fat diet, it takes about 24 to 48 hours to actually produce uh, ketones sufficient to have a therapeutic effect. When we administer specific types of fats, uh, specifically caprylic acid and capric acid, or ketone esters, we can get uh, a therapeutic level of ketosis within uh, 15 to 30 minutes. So it's thought that two millimolar of ketones in the blood is a level that's, that's uh, uh, it's necessary and sufficient to metabolically manage a wide variety of seizure disorders. Uh, it also has therapeutic effects for cancer that I'm gonna show you uh, in the next couple slides. But we can quickly produce, instead of 24 or 48 hours, we can rapidly induce therapeutic ketosis with uh, specific fatty acids and ketone supplementation. And as mentioned, the ketone bodies here that are elevated in the blood are powerful forms of energy for the brain, the heart, the skin, and the muscles. So the question now is, uh, our ketone bodies is nutritional ketosis neuroprotective, and that's, I'm not gonna discuss that. This uh, will be a topic that Dr. Chilla Ari will present after my presentation, but uh, uh, the, most of the thrust of our research is actually studying the effects of nutritional ketosis on these neurological disorders. And we've published a number of studies, uh, and the mo most recent one in Nature Medicine, looking at a a inflammatory pathway that we think is important for, uh, for brain injury. 